Okay, Harry Gregson Williams, let's talk about The Martian. How did you come aboard this project? Well, the director, Ridley Scott, asked me to do the film. Um, you know, I'd worked with him a few times before, and I'd worked multiple times with his brother, Tony, until the day he died, actually. Um, but uh, uh, with this one, Ridley sent me the script whilst I was doing some music for his previous music movie um, last summer, which was uh, 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 Exodus, mm -hmm. uh, Gods and Kings. Um, he sent me a script and said, look, this is special. You'll want to do it. Uh, and uh, indeed, he was right. What was not to like about it? I read it in one sitting and thought, my God, I got to be a part of this. Um, so, yeah, I was the lucky one. That was, that's basically how that happened. Um, you know, he, he had already shot the movie um, when I first saw. Uh, he invited me to his, uh, his place in the south of France where he was editing it which is quite eccentric, <laughs> his, his chateau in the south of France. Uh, he said, look, how do you feel about coming to the south of France? I said, mm, I think I can fit it into my schedule. Pretty sure I can. Uh, pretty sure I can. Um, so I jetted down there, and there he was. Uh, he showed me the first cut of the movie with his editor, Pietro Scalia, who's really talented. Um, he's really talented, and re he's really musically orientated, too. Mm -hmm. um, he, he'd actually been very responsible for me getting involved with Prometheus a few years earlier. Um, so there they were, and he showed me the first cut of the film, um, which was really not far off the final version. You know, Ridley's really quick. He, he's, he's very visionary. He knows what he wants. He's not one of these directors where, you know, often a composer, you, you join the film, uh, I don't know, a few weeks into post-production. The actors have gone home. They've been paid. They've gone. There's nothing more they can do. Um, you know, the, the, the director's piecing together the film. He's shuffling the pack. Some of the scenes that, that appear in the film at that moment may not be in the final scene, uh, in the final film. Um, indeed, some of the scenes that are towards the beginning of the movie, he might switch to the end of the movie. Some of them might be quite long. They might end up quite short, so on and so forth. So it's a rough cut. Um, and people often ask me, you know, um, presumably you work to the finished film <laughs> nothing could be further than the truth look if i waited till the film was completed i'd have waited two days before i got into theaters um you know and, and with 80 85 odd minutes of music to write you got to start somewhere you've got to start as early as possible you know more time equals better results um, mm. i've never known having more time has meant that the score suffers <laughs> quite the reverse is true of course um so i saw the first cut of the film and I loved it. There were already some of these uh, 70s pop songs in there uh, that Watney's uh, listening to under <laughs> duress. Um, uh, but there were large portions of the film that needed um, score. Um, so the first, our first port of call was to, to work out what we were going to do with A, Watney's character, and B, the geographical situation of the movie, Mars. Um, and, you know, we agonized a little bit about Mars. We, we thought perhaps we, we, we should make it really threatening, really dark. And the score would be one of these scores that, uh, you know, you see all the time for sci-fi movies that are dark and moody, atmospheric, not particularly tuneful. And, and uh, we, we decided we really didn't have to go that route. The, um, you know, what is character, such an optimistic, charismatic guy, you know, in the face of all this... Uh, this trepidation and loneliness and uh, threat, he, he manages to, you know, he sciences his stuff and he kind of enjoys doing it. He's, he's a, such a cool character that I started with his theme uh, and I found clearly that it needed to be an optimistic theme, you know, so something that was, uh, and sometimes that, that literally translates musically to something that's going up as opposed to a downer. Um, so his theme actually is full of intervals that are going up uh, and give you that sort of lift. Um, and when we first <clears throat> we first start underscoring his journey, um, he's pretty much stuck in his in his uh, hab, and he's trying to work out how the hell he's going to survive. So he needs water, he needs food, um, he needs uh, to be able to breathe. He needs all, all the basic fundamental human things. So he goes about um, he goes about uh, the business of, of of working out how he can do that. You know, planting potatoes and stuff. So the music that underscored those scenes um, uh, was quite personal, not epic by any sense of imagination. It, so it, it needed to be quite personal um, and quite small to begin with to accompany him. And, it, you know, there's a lot of monologue. There's a lot of him talking to camera. Um, 
And so the music didn't need to overwhelm that, but it needed to complement his, his kind of scientific uh, adventure. Uh, and for that, I used quite a lot of synths, uh, sort of bubbling synthesizers, arpeggiated synthesizers. And on top of that floated a kind of clean, clear theme. Uh, and for the rest of the movie, I'm really working that theme and it works itself up into a bit of a lather later uh, <laughs> into <laughs> something epic and spacious, I hope, and majestic. Um, so from small beginnings, the score grows into something uh, much larger. Uh, and that was intentional. That was something we discussed early on. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the way that Ridley works is he, he, he uh, we talk about it and he talks in terms of color and uh, texture, darkness and light and these sort of things. Um, so I went back to my studio and uh, sadly had to leave the south of France, had to <laughs> drag me away, actually. Um, back to my studio in Santa Monica in California. Um, and I started work on, work on, uh, on these early scenes, uh, trying to capture the mood and character of, of, uh, of Watney. And then I realized really what I was going to be doing for the rest of the movie was to kind of chart his emotional arc, um, which included some pretty big down points. You know, there were, for, for, for all the highs, there were a few real low points, uh, particularly when you think all's going, he thinks, we think, all's going swimmingly well. He's growing potatoes. He's uh, colonized Mars in his own words. Uh, everything's going pretty well. There's a, there's a, a, a rescue mission underway. Uh, and then through no fault of his own, there's, there's an accident. All these crops are... Uh, eliminated and he's kind of back to square one in fact he's back to a worse place than he would have been uh, when, when, when he started this quest um uh and the music is very very bleak very bleak very lonely there uh but generally you know what is this sort of guy he has a challenge he goes at it and he finds a way of uh, uh uh getting through what he has to get through uh and then along with his emotional trajectory does his geographical one. Um, he, you know, three quarters of the way through the film, he has to dare to load up his little VW camper type um, <laughs> Mars buggy and set off away from the relative safety of his habitation um, to another point on Mars, which is a long, long way away, hundreds and hundreds of miles away, uh, in order to to uh, fulfill this, this this supposed rescue mission and the music there but changes you know that what 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 has been uh quite small and personal uh then opens out because the vistas that really shot uh, he shot shot a lot of these things in the in the desert in uh in jordan in fact i think it's called the red desert for good reason I think so, um, yeah. Um, you know, I remember looking at it and uh, I, was, I felt a bit stupid, actually. I said to <laughs> Ridley, where the hell did you find this landscape? And he's like, Harry, uh, take, he froze frame the film. He said, take a look at that. And I looked at it and I said, man, it looks like Mars. And he said, well, you know what? There aren't any craters uh, in the Red Desert, but we've, we've put them there. Special effects. So <laughs> a lot, <laughs> I felt a bit dumb. But, you know, a lot, a lot of what... Um, you see that is actually there, you know, um, and he complemented it with various craters with dust storms and whatnot to make it feel like we were on, on this, uh, this austere planet. Um, so at that point, when he sets out, the music really opens out and from small beginnings, kind of synth led um, little bubbling techie things to accompany his science, we really open out into something more emotional, a bit grander. Um, um, and, you know, as I said, to begin with, when we had first thought about how we would deal with Mars, the planet, as it were, um, we'd thought maybe dark, dark, dark tones. But in fact, we ended up more with majesty and awe. And we felt that that supported the story better. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, not making any mistake that if, you know, if he puts a foot wrong, he's going to get the, the, the planet's going to kill him. However, um, he doesn't put a foot wrong. He's, he's not that kind of guy. He's, he's, he's going to succeed. Um so the music really does open out. And then, of course, there's the, the, the huge sort of run in at the end of the movie where the rescue operation is taking place. You never know whether he's really going to make it or not. And so the music becomes uh, quite frenetic. And, you know, I, I in the scene where Watney is floating in outer space towards, well, I don't know outer space, but he's floating in space towards uh, his commander, Commander Lewis, Jessica Chastain character, um, hoping against hope that he's going to, 
fall into her arms. You know, the music has this sort of cyclical build that's happening. And, uh, you know, I took my clue from the, the tethers. It's quite operatic, what, what the way that Ridley shot this. So there was no reason for the music to be uh, anything less than that. So, so uh, yeah, the music becomes kind of big and grand and, um, and quite tense. It needs to lead us to, 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 to the conclusion of the story where, where actually it's pretty triumphant. Mm-hmm. So those, that, that, this, this emotional and geographical uh, arc of, of the main character was my, my central job on this film. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't you take us through some of the nuts and bolts of like actual, uh, you know, when you're spotting the movie and, uh, you know, working with an orchestra to, you know, finally put your music up on the screen? Well, you know, the, the, uh, um, I told you about spotting the movie. I went down to France to his house there. That's, that's where the spotting session took place, where he wow. we went through the movie bit by bit. And he, he would say, you know, this scene absolutely needs music. I'm, I'm not tied to any particular spot for you to start, but I do want you to go through this scene to where he exits this room. And I want you to come out into almost uh, into a sort of relative silence as he, as something else happens, or, or, or he would, he would lead me through where each cue would start and, and end mm-hmm. roughly. Uh, and that would leave me with a roadmap of, um, I think 70 odd cues to do some of them okay. quite small, 35 seconds or something. Some of them more chunky, like a seven or eight minute cue as he crosses Mars, um, in his vehicle. And when he busts out of the, uh, the hab, there's a, there's a, you know, it's the longest cue in the movie. And, uh, uh, it, I was able to develop his theme quite well there. So yeah, the first thing was spotting the, the spotting the movie. Then, it, then the, uh, the nuts and bolts of me coming back to my studio and writing music. I mean, <clears throat> you can talk to a director all you like about, <laughs> you know, I'll do this and I'll do this and it'll be great. And it's going to be wonderful. And you know, the proof's in the pudding, as they say, you know, you gotta, you gotta make some music, bring the director into your world. Uh, in this case, it's into my studio. So I really came back to LA um, for quite a sizable part of the post-production period. And, you know, I call him and say, Rid, you've got to come over to my studio. I think I've got, I've got four or five cues that's, they're really working. I really want you to hear them. So I'd play those to him. He'd come to my studio. I'd play th- my demos to him. And he'd make comments. You know, he'd make comments like, um, you know, this is, he, would, he was a very positive kind of guy. He would normally start with, this is great. This is awesome. How is this working? Um, but, you know, uh, I'd like to feel a little bit more danger as Watney does this, this, does this. Or he might say, I think we can afford a bit more pace um, as this happens, as this happens. So, you know, he, he would guide me. He'd direct me. You know, he's a director. He, know, he knows how to direct actors and uh, cinematographers and editors. And he sure knows how to direct a um, composer. Hey, he's had a bit of experience. I think he's had some pretty damn good ones in the past, hasn't he? <laughs> I had some quite, quite big boots to fill. You know, James Horner, I think... Um, Gary Goldsmith, uh, Van Gellis, um, to mention uh, just a few. So there you go. Um, that was quite alarming. Uh, but uh, so I, we gradually would go through cue by cue. He would come to my studio, usually make comments. You know, occasionally I'd have uh, <laughs> what I like to think of as a hole in one. You know, I'd play him a piece of music and he'd say, great, next. <laughs> so that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> um and, you know, he, there were a couple of cues that didn't make it. You know, he's like, actually, Harry, I want you to rethink it. I want you to, to, to don't, don't make fixes to it. I mean, actually rewrite this um, because X, Y, Z. Because, you know, I'd like to feel a bit more danger here. I'd like to feel a bit more triumph right here. So, you know, maybe I'd got, I'd got the feeling wrong for him. But, you know, he directed me. He took me through my paces and uh, very much like any other director does. But, you know, the good thing about working with Red is he does have a clear vision for his film. So he clearly knows what he wants from music at any given moment. So if you're not giving that to him during those moments, um, yeah, he'll, he'll let you know. And, uh, and you've got to go off and, and find a way of doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. But he's, he's, he's really cool to work with. He's very collaborative and he does, he lets you, you know, he loosens the leash a bit. He doesn't say, you got to do this, you got to do that. He's, you know, he, 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 you know, he says things like, I mean, for instance, uh, the whole denouement of the film, um, you know, where, where, where the rescue mission is taking place, where Commander Lewis, for instance, goes out on her little, mm, I don't know what you call that thing that takes her out on her tether. Um, that thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that thing. Uh, and we're waiting to see Watney blast off, you know, do his fly like Iron Man trick. Um, you know, as, as she goes out, 
you know, he said to me, think about big silences, Harry. I mean, I want music, but don't make it too grand and too big to begin with. You know, she's, we're going to have the sound of, <laughs> as the tether goes out. And I want to feel, you know, I want to feel there in a big amount of space. So, in fact, the music wasn't too active there. It had to be broad and expansive um, and, you know, to reflect the infinite space that, that, that they're in there. Um, so these are the these are the challenges that made um, working on the Martian unique. Actually, I'd never mm -hmm. had um, opportunity to make music like this before, um, and nor had I um, had so, so much fun doing a score. I think I you know I think I enjoyed myself, and it's sometimes quite difficult to enjoy yourself scoring <laughs> a film because you know it's pretty heavy duty. Depending on who the director and producers are, you know it can be pretty brutal. Um, you know, fun nonetheless, but brutal. With this, I wouldn't describe any of the the uh, of the journey that we went on as brutal, more uh, one of discovery. You know, and uh, he sent me back a couple of times, as as is as is customary, uh, as is likely. You know, if 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 you're thinking of being a composer and you're thinking that you won't get pushed back a couple of times, then think again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's probably another job you should look at. So you know, very much in these sort of things, one's got to give a little and take a little push pull um things aren't black or white they're somewhere in between usually um so so it's it's necessary to to have quite a thick skin and to listen carefully to any pearls of wisdom that drop from a director's lips uh, mm -hmm. because that's that's where you that's where the good stuff is you know it's no good thinking that uh, you play a cue to a director and he says well it's not quite right but i'm liking it you know, there's no point in ruffling your feathers there thinking, oh, my God, how can he not like it? Much, much, much more to, to the point would be to analyze and be quick and smart, intelligent at that point to just try and eke out of him what it, what would make the difference, what would make it a cue that really works for him as opposed to a cue that's kind of working for him. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, on some occasions, as I said earlier on, there are such things as whole in one, <laughs> birdies. <laughs> even eagles, uh, <laughs> it, it does happen. Um, and, and those you savor, you know, and, you, mm -hmm. and you, you thank your lucky stars. Right. Well, thank you so much and congratulations on the film. Really great work. Great. Well, thanks so much. I, I had a great time. I had a blast doing it, i got to say. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. Well, have a good day. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.